Hey, how you doing everyone? Good afternoon, good evening, whenever you might find this video. Uh, Tom Strignano Alonji here. Uh, I've been questioned by a, a lot of my old uh, students uh, with exactly what's been going on. They've been looking forward to like hearing from me. And I've been, I disappeared for quite a while. Um, well, there's no short answer to that question of like what's going on. But most recently, I have moved to Wrangell, Alaska. And I've come up to good old Wrangell, Alaska, because I wanted to actually experience Alaska. It's one of the things that I have on my bucket list, and considering I'm 54 years old, I better start getting to working on those things. And um, the second main reason, other than wanting to see the state itself and see the nature and experience the extreme cold weather, global warming my ass, um, was that I wanted to travel up the Stikine River, that's why I took Wrangell, uh, the island of Wrangell, Alaska itself. I wanted to be able to travel up the Stikine River in the summer and visit some old ghost mining towns, the old gold mining towns. I was always curious to see those places and try to walk in the shoes of the prospectors. You know, being a foreign exchange speculator or a market speculator that doesn't like, trade other things other than Forex, you know, we risk our money to make money. Those dudes were risking their life to make money. The big difference. Now, you could financially ruin yourself doing this stuff, yes. But, you know, you still have a life. You still be able to do something. You work at, like, uh, Cinnabon or something and make funds, you know. But I figured as a way of saying hi and let you guys and gals know that I will be back. I'm going to be launching a new blog. Um, it's going to be called Park Avenue Forex. And it's a tribute to Casa de Spanley Torino, the bank that I was a chief trader at. Uh, that was 500 Park Avenue when it was in existence before it got absorbed by Unicredito Bank in 2002, I think the, the final takeover was. Um, I'll be launching that blog and I'm going to be looking to put some good stuff on it. My whole objective is um, to put out worthy information for you guys and gals to make money with. I've studied market, the markets for over 30 years. I've, I mean, a tremendous amount of hours went into actually studying and learning from other traders that have been around a long time. You know, the old salts of the marketplace that uh, taught me some tricks here and there. I never had really full um, plan in place because you have to develop your own plan. And we'll be talking more about that on the blog. But I figured I'd come back and make a splash i hope and explain uh, a trade well i'm here i'm sitting here looking for a trade and um i have a couple of points that i was interested in and the first point that i was interested in and i'll get into this uh, teaching it more about it is a point that i had at 124.85 um, that point was a point that i calculated that i found of interest because of ratios and different volatilities and things like that, that I said if a market passes up above it, okay, it's showing some strength. Now, does it mean that it guaranteed it's going to go up 100%? Absolutely not. Um, but what it's telling me is that because it went up above this 124.85, I have a chance that the marketplace could rally and break the um, 125, say, 125.50 level and then go up to attack an upper level at uh, 126.88. Now, I got long the marketplace at, uh, where did I get long at? 124.64. Okay. If it breaks 124.85, I'll be in decent shape for it to try to attack this top again and break it. If, it. if it breaks it and can't get above it, I'm going to be a little suspect, but there's one major pivot point that I am interested in, that if this pivot point holds here, now this is a four hour chart, the pivot point holds of 124, say 30, I got a chance of this thing trading higher. How much higher? I would like to see 126.88. Doesn't mean I'm going to sell there. If I'm fortunate enough for the marketplace, 
the to give me 126.88. I'm going to see what happens because this is another. Um, actually, it's just a just a pivot point on a four-hour chart from 616, uh, 0800. Okay, uh, 2020. Very near 2020. Um, right now it's at 2:32 p.m. Wrangle time, which would be four-hour difference. So. It's uh, 4.32 p.m. New York. It's the next trading day. And it's uh, 7.3.2020 for you guys. It's still 7.2 for me. So today is it's, it's Friday for you guys. It's Thursday afternoon for me. So I figured I'd put this up as like my comeback trade for uh, YouTube. I hope it works out. My stop loss is uh, right here. I lose 167 bucks. I only took a 50,000 uh, half a half a lot on this. Um, so I'm mean losing 167, and I'm trying to get to say 120. Let's, you know, let's just say 125.80. So if I go 120. One uh, 124.64, 125.75 out, press appropriate, blah, 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 so about 50,000. Ah, yeah, I'm looking at $555 gain at 125.75 versus 160, dollars loss. So that's, that's pretty darn good. Doesn't mean I'm taking profits there. I'll look there, see what's going on. Sometimes, you know, you, you'd love to get a zoom through it, like a break, like a rocket. Wonderful. Do I think that's going to happen? No, this marketplace has been very slow. But we can always uh, hope. So long uh, around 124.65. Stop loss, 124.30. Uh, no take profit in, just observing. See if we can break 125.50. And then see if we can attack the old pivot high uh, at 126.88. So cheers. Look forward to talking to you guys again. Any questions, feel free to leave them on YouTube. And I'll get back to you. Ciao.